Okay, so I'll make that uh, 9.31 now. So um, a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, the way the presentation or the conversation is going to work today is um, I'm going to introduce Sanjay and then Sanjay is going to share some fundamental basics uh, with you uh, over the course of a presentation of about 15 to 20 minutes. And then once Sanjay shared that material, we'll open it up to the questions. And I've already got a long list of questions here from people that have registered for the uh, conversation today. But in the bottom of your screen, in the bottom of your Zoom call, you should be able to see a little box with a queue on it. And underneath that, there'll be a Q and an A. And what we always do is, uh, for the people that have made the effort, for want of a better phrase, to come on the call, we give those questions or the people that made the call questions priority. So if you have any questions of Sanjay as we go through, whether that be during the course of the presentation or after Sanjay's finished, if you just hit that box, it should open up a question box. If you type the question in there, then um, obviously I'll ask those questions of Sanjay as we go along. Um, Hello, Summit. Um, Mark Swindell is on the course um, yesterday or the day before. It seems a long time ago now. I had a problem with my broadband at home. So if my broadband drops out for whatever reason, then Mark will take over on the Q&As. Um, and he's also there to operate the chat box and things like that. But if you could keep the chat box free. Uh, so if you have any technical questions or anything like that, then please post it in the chat box. But uh, if you can just um, keep the questions in the Q&A and uh, save your thanks and admiration, as no doubt you'll have for Sanjay uh, for the end of the call, uh, that would be really good. So if I could uh, introduce Sanjay, if you could come on the screen, Sanjay, and I'll just say a few things about you. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I've got various people registered from various places and there's lots of names of people on the call that uh, I don't know. So just brief introduction for me. Uh, Simon Chaplin, as I said, uh, I own an accountancy practice in Peterborough called Greenstones and I also run a business called the Accountants Mastermind, which helps uh, work and mastermind with accountants. About... Uh, I think it must be about 12 years ago now, Sanjay, if I remember rightly, it was around 2008, might have been a bit before, a bit after. Uh, I was first introduced to Sanjay by a chap called Alan, and at the time I was, uh, well, 15 and a half stone, which is about three and a half stones heavier than what I am at the moment. Um, I was drinking uh, too much. Um, I was smoking and working uh, a significant number of hours during the course of a week. And uh, through various reasons, I decided that as well as a business coach, which I had at the time, I needed some sort of life coach or, uh, as it turned out to be, uh, an emotional intelligence coach. So I uh, was introduced to Sanjay and Sanjay came along and sat uh, in a meeting room at Greenstones. And I still remember sitting down with Sanjay and we spent an hour and a half and he shared basically the material that we are going to share with you this morning. And... Um, there are a number of points in my business life uh, when I met certain people that changed the course of uh, my my life and my business life and the direction that I was taking. And Sanjay is certainly firmly in uh, that category. So uh, without further ado, let me uh, introduce uh, Sanjay. Let Sanjay take over the screen and uh, say hello and share his material. And as I say, if you've got any questions as you go along, please pop them in the Q&A box. Um, we won't, I won't name you or anything like that. So if you've got any questions that you want to ask, then I'll ask them and obviously Sanjay will answer them and you can do that in complete uh, confidence. So Sanjay, if you would like to um, share the fundamentals for us, that'd be brilliant. Uh, good morning. Uh, can you just confirm that you can hear me clearly? please? I can hear you clearly. Yep. And uh, also just to reiterate, my broadband played up the other day. And uh, if my broadband, Simon will take over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, uh, again, I'm just going to share and uh, let me know when you can uh, see my screen, Simon. I can, definitely, yeah. Can you do it as a slideshow? That's it. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yep. so the slideshow should be up now uh, with my handsome face and my details uh, on there. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, what I'm going to share with you are the fundamentals of emotional intelligence the way that I approach it. This is not really uh, anything that you'll find in any books on emotional intelligence. This is all based on practical uh, experience through my life and uh, through the lives of the people that I've worked with, uh, especially uh, people like Simon and a lot of other successful accountants and business people 
uh, from uh, different professions. So uh, let me just start off. So first and foremost, uh, I'd like to just uh, say that uh, some people love me and some people hate me. Uh, I'm uh, described uh, uh, as being like Borrell. So some of you by the end of this presentation may go, what the hell was all of that about? And some of you may go, wow, that was uh, something that really uh, got through and meant something to me. Whichever one it is, you're right. And I encourage you to really just pay attention to this material and make up your own minds about it. Because I'm not here to convince you. If I have to convince you, then I'm going to keep on convincing you. I'm here to share some information with you. And it's your job to convince yourself. So ask the questions that, that you need to later on or uh, arrange a conversation with me and I'll answer them one-to-one -one with you as well. Uh, but uh, I'm not here to convince you. So first thing, in the very basics of what I teach, uh, I start off with the premise that whatever you continuously think about becomes your reality. So whatever business you're in, whatever uh, goals you have in life, the things that you focus on continuously are the things that eventually become your reality. Now, when I ask people, okay, if thoughts eventually lead to the things in your life, why is it that so many of us don't have the things that we continuously think about? Surely there's something else that needs to happen. And immediately, most people will say, yeah, you've got to take action. And most people will also say, you've got to take massive action. That's what I did. Uh, I had some really great coaches when I first started off in business. They taught me all the right things and I applied all the right things. So my mindset, which is the thinking, was a good mindset by that stage. It wasn't when I first started, but it became a good mindset. I was thinking the right things and I was taking massive action. I was taking all the actions that I should have taken and uh, needed to take based on the advice that I was getting from the coaches I was working with and from the other business people that I was consulting. And yet, I still wasn't getting the results that I was after. So right thinking, right action, but wrong results. Are you experiencing that? And are you experiencing that in your business? Now, what is your thinking around coronavirus and the impact of coronavirus around your business? Remember, whatever you tend to focus on and continuously think about will lead to your results. If you're thinking about coronavirus in a way in which it says internally, this is bad for me, what sort of actions are you going to take from that uh, sense of this is bad for me? That will re lead eventually to the results that you experience. Now, as I said, there was something missing in all of that because I was uh, thinking the right thoughts taking the right actions and getting the wrong results. And eventually, through a journey, I discovered that it, actually it was the emotions that were the missing component. And pretty much growing up in the UK, nobody had ever told me about emotions in the way that I heard about them. And in fact, there was a great avoidance of emotions in the UK. So what I realized was what we think about leads to the way we feel about things the way we feel about things leads to the quality of the actions. It may not change the actions, but the quality of the actions change. So if you're feeling great uh, about coronavirus, you'll take a series of actions and the results of those actions will be different. If you're feeling crap about coronavirus, for example, if you're feeling that your business is uh, coming to an end or it could end, you're worried about your clients that's gonna mean that the very same actions that you take, you'll take in a different way, which will lead to different results. So thoughts lead to the emotions that you feel. The emotions that you feel change the quality of the actions that you take and the results that you get. And as Simon shared, when I first met him, he was working pretty much seven days a week. And if I remember correctly, in his words, he said if he was lucky, he get to watch the football on a Sunday with a steak and a, a nice bottle of wine. And if he was really lucky, he'd get to half time and he wouldn't have checked his email. So that's where he was. And applying the emotional intelligence in addition to the coaching that he was already receiving. He had some great coaches who coached him on the business, but I coached him on the emotions. The actions that he took started to produce different results to the point at which 
he ended up working far less and getting better results. So he was being more, he was doing less, and he was getting better results. That's the premise under which I work, and that's the promise I make to people, that if they apply these tools that I teach them, that's what will happen for them. So what's the problem with thinking? Because uh, we're all taught that we need to think positively. We need to uh, be really clever in our thinking. Well, the problem with thinking is we have 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day. And if you're a bit of a nerd like me at times, you sit down with a calculator and you work out what that means. 60 to 80,000 didn't really mean much to me, but I worked out what we was, how many thoughts that we have. And you worked out that approximately in the last five minutes, minutes or so that you've been listening to me, you had 200 thoughts being processed by your mind, by your brain. How many of those thoughts do you remember? How many are you even aware of? Because the thing about thinking is, we can't deal with 60 to 80,000 thoughts. We can only deal with the fraction of them. And if you take the analogy of the iceberg and say that 10% is visible, 90% is invisible. It wasn't the 10% that was visible that sank the Titanic. It was the 90% that wasn't. So in terms of thinking, if we say that, let's just limit it to 60,000 thoughts, you'll be aware of about 6,000 thoughts. In reality, I think it's far less than that, but let's just stick to the maths because it's simple. 10% is visible, 6,000 thoughts. 54,000 of your thoughts every day you are unaware of. So you could be a superb thinker and think 6,000 positive thoughts consciously every single day. But if out of the 54,000 that you're not aware of, more than 6,000 are negative, and let's just say, for simplicity, they have equal weighting. 6,000 positive thoughts, 6,001 negative thoughts. You may on the surface come across as a great positive thinker, but the results that you get won't reflect that. The results that you get will be dictated by what's happening at the subconscious level, and that's the reality for most of us. It's not what we do on the surface, it's what we do below the surface that really counts because that's where the majority of the thinking is. And the, you know, what's the advantage of emotions? Well, the biggest advantage is we don't have 60 to 80,000 emotions a day. We have a handful of emotions because all of those thoughts lead to a few emotions and those emotions then impact the quality of the actions that you take. And you know, but that's the relationship between thoughts and emotions. So you can work on the hundreds to thousands of thoughts that you have, or you can work on a few emotions. Which do you think is gonna take less time? I know that working on the emotions is far quicker than working on the thinking, and that's why people that I work with get rapid results. That's why Simon started to turn things around very quickly, because he started to focus on the emotions. So what are these emotions that I'm talking about? Fundamentally, we can break them down into nine categories. Now, within these each uh, categories, so for example, anger, you might have something like mild annoyance to irritation to anger as we normally know it, to rage, all within the category of anger. And with each one of these levels, there will be many, many emotions, but we can come down to these levels. And there's a red line there as well, and I'll come on to that in a moment. But fundamentally, I don't want you to remember these emotions for now. I want you to remember that this is really simple. Those letters, CAP and ACFLAP, what do they stand for? They are the first letters of all of these words. And I was taught to remember all of this that way, CAP and ACFLAP. I find ACFLAP a bit of a mouthful. I like simplicity, so I decided that I needed to change it, and this is what I've changed it to. Cap and crap. Below the line, you feel crap. The further below the line you go, the more crap you feel. Above the line, you're in cap, and what's the difference between above and below the line? What's the difference between cap and crap? The difference is the R, letter R, and R stands for the resistance line, the red line that's there. The line that's stopping you from going from negative 
to positive. If nothing else, just remember this. Cap, crap, and between them is the red line. Let me explain this another way. If you're going on a journey for the first time and you want to know where or where you're going, you want to know how to get there, nowadays you just get a sat nav system in your car and you program in where you want to go. A lot of satellite system and navigation systems work by you just entering the postcode. So you enter in the postcode, then you don't know how to work out how to get to where you're getting to. You need to know where you're going to and you need to know precisely because if you get one of the letters or one of the numbers wrong, you don't end up in the same destination. So it's important to know where you're going. It's important to have clear goals, but you don't have to work out the route. That's the job of the sat nav system. And it's not even the unit in your car. It's the unit works out the route based on the information beamed down to it by the satellites up in the air. So you put in the postcode, it works out way to go for you. And then you start driving and you get to choose which gear you drive in. You can drive everywhere in reverse if you like, but you won't go very far and you won't get there quickly. Or you could drive in any of the gears. Why do you drive in the highest gear possible? You drive in the highest gear possible for two main reasons. Number one, the higher the gear you're in, the faster you can drive the car and get to your destination quicker. And the higher the gear you're in, the more miles per gallon you get. So what does that mean? For the same distance traveled, you have to burn less fuel. Let me repeat, for the same distance traveled, which is the distance from where you are to your goal, you burn less fuel. And in real terms for humans, what that means is the actions that you take require less effort. Let me show you it another way. The emotions that you decide to be in dictate the gear that you drive your car in. And in this case, the car is your body. Which gear do you drive in most of the time? Because we all have access to all of this, but most of us, especially in business and in life actually, but most of us drive in these gears, second and third. Which means if you are successful in business, if you are getting the results that you want, you're still working too hard for them. So I've worked with people who Simon has introduced me to two and other people have who are already successful, but they're having to burn the candle at both ends. They're working very, very hard because they're operating in the middle emotions rather than in the emotions which are higher up and getting the results quicker with less effort. So that's uh, something that I want you to bear in mind. Apart from cap, crap, and the red line, whereabouts are you driving your business and your life? Let me show it to you another way. I'm gonna come out of the presentation for this. So we all are like these bottles of water. We come in different shapes, different sizes, different colors, but what's inside of us is exactly the same. I'm gonna just stop the share, Simon. Let me know when you can see me on the screen again i can see it okay so let me just change so can you see my trusty prop there yes that's one of the bottles of water that i was talking about is that still water or is that sparkling water still until life comes and takes you up so you're this bottle of water you're going you know going along doing what you're doing you're all still and you're all calm and life throws corona virus at you and shakes you up. And these bubbles start to come and these bubbles represent the emotions. Emotions are fuel. If no fuel is flowing through your car, whether it's electric or petrol or diesel rather, you can't drive the car. If there's no electricity flowing through the wires to your computer, your computer won't work, the lights won't work. Energy has to flow. If there is a lid on it, energy doesn't flow. So there you are, all of those bubbles, but they're not being able to be used. What you have to do is do this. I'm being careful, can you hear that? That's the energy flowing, and can you see the energy flowing now? That's yes. motion. If you remember nothing else, remember, 
your emotional energy has to flow for it to be used. And the British have something called the stiff upper lip. And the stiff upper lip is this lid firmly in place, making sure that you can't use your emotional energy. Emotional energy is an intelligent system, just like thought energy, your mind. That's the f thing. They work under different rules. They use different tools, but they are both energies that you can use to achieve your goals in life. And the key thing is, for most people, they don't know how to use their emotional energy. So what I do is teach them, number one, how to take that lid off. Number two, how to leave the lid off so that the energy is flowing. And number three, how to then effectively use that energy. That's it for the presentation, Simon. Uh, brilliant. So the, uh, the, the, the question that uh, springs straight to mind for me, uh, given what you've just shared with us, uh, how if I'm in fear or anger or any of the words that were in the title of the presentation so the words were uncertain concerned overwhelmed anxious and worried and I know you, you said there was one of those words that that stuck out for you that was different to the other ones uh, and perhaps perhaps we'll, we'll talk about them separately but if if I'm experiencing emotions that are below the line how do I get above the line what do I do do I uh, jump up and down run around a run go running exercise drink what, what's the secret? Uh, you can do all of those, actually, and you might even enjoy it. <laughs> but it won't really get to your goals, uh, get you to your goals any quicker. Let me just go back to one of the slides, if I may, uh, just for a moment. So I'm just going to go back uh, to the presentation. Just bear with me. And let me see if I can. Uh, let me try it a different way. Sorry about that. So let's go back to this slide. Just let me know that you can see this slide. Can you see this slide? I can see the slide on the screen. Yeah, it's it's not showing as a as a slide show, but uh, I can read the slide, Sanjay. So, oh, there it goes. There it goes. It's not going. Oh, okay. It's working now. That was working. <laughs> Technology is wonderful because I was trying to just go to the slide. Let me just see. There. There we go. Okay. So the question you're asking me, give me the first word again. Uh, the first word was a feeling of uncertainty or being uncertain. Okay. Uncertainty is coming from the realm of fear because uncertainty is the sense of I don't know what's going to happen. This is a situation. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid of what's coming down the line, i.e. what the future is going to bring. That's uncertainty, and it's the, the realm of fear. So you're in first gear. Uh, so then the second one was concerned. Concern is similar. Concern is worrying about the future. I'm concerned about the future is the same as saying I'm worried about the future, which is back into fear. And then overwhelmed? Overwhelmed uh, is uh, a sense of, i got too much to do. There's so much happening. I don't even know where to begin. And overwhelm uh, ultimately will lead to anger because uh, overwhelm is I'm out of control. This thing has come along. The government's uh, put this lockdown. I can't even control what I do in my business or my life. And that when you're out of control, that brings up the feeling of anger because nobody likes to be controlled. And then the last two were anxious and worried. Anxious and worried, again, back to fear. Anxious is a mild level of uh, fear and worry is, again, uh, concerned about the future. So that's fear uh, as well. And uh, you were asking me, how do you get from Below the line to above the line, was that the question? Yeah, so when you, when you take, the, take the cap off, obviously all the energy comes bursting out all in a big yeah. flow. So is that what you do? Do you get angry? Do you shout at people? What, how do you get above the line? What's the, the well, technique? When the energy 
comes out. So I personally start foaming at the mouth. So <laughs> that's all the bubbles coming out. Uh, no, it, it, what it is, is the reason we are below the line is we, and I can remember I called it the resistance line. So when you are below the line, you are resisting the reality. In this case, coronavirus is here, but the public are resisting it. That's why people weren't observing uh, the ISO, you know, social uh, distancing rules, because they were resisting the reality. Nobody wants coronavirus. Nobody wants to feel the fear of dying. That's what coronavirus is bringing about. The death of the body, the death of your business, the death of your client's business, it's all about death. And nobody wants to face the prospect they're actually mortal because we all have, want to believe we're immortal. We're going to be here forever in this body and it brings up fear. So we are resisting it. The way to get over it first is to accept the reality, which is whether I like it or not, this is the reality. And acceptance, as you can see, is up there. Now this scale isn't linear, it's logarithmic, which means if you mark these from a level of zero to 1000, this line is at the level of 200. All of these are pretty low. From 200 to 1000 is these three emotions and acceptance uh, will be around the level of 500 to 600, which is a very high energy. So just by accepting the reality, you basically bob your head above the line. And when you start to make that, those decisions that you've got to make from a place of acceptance, you're not wasting your energy on fighting the reality, which is, I want this to be different. I don't want coronavirus. I don't want to be in lockdown. I want to be doing the business as I did it a week ago. All of that is fighting the reality because the reality is right now, you can't do business the way you've been used to doing. Get used to that. You can't change that right now, but you can change the way that you feel about it and go and do business in a different way. And you will, get through this situation because this will come to an end. You'll get through it, but you won't just survive through it. You'll start to thrive through it. And those people that thrive through it are the people that when all of this is over and business uh, starts to operate under different rules, because I don't think it's ever going to go back the way it was, you will be the people at the forefront. So let me just come out of the screen share so you can see me again. So you will be at the forefront and you've got to start making decisions. But if you make your decisions from below the line where you're feeling crap, you're going to make crap decisions. How many of you have made decisions when you're below the line and you know that they end up being crap decisions? You need to make decisions from above the line, from a place of courage. If you were in courage right now, what decisions would you be making about your business, about the direction of your business, about what actions you're going to take your business? They will be very different to the decisions you would take from being in fear. Does that answer your question? It, it does. <laughs> and you make, you make it sound so simple. So uh, I could be sitting here now thinking, oh, well, okay, all I've got to do is just accept the situation, accept the reality. However, when I accept that reality, Sanjay, accept that coronavirus is here and all these customers and clients are ringing up and chasing me for information that I don't, I don't know the answer to in lots of the cases, it's not that easy. I can accept it. And perhaps for a brief moment, I feel uh, free of all that. Perhaps if I'm sat in the garden or I've gone for a walk or I'm playing with the kids or stroking the dog or whatever it is. But as, as soon as I then come back to reality and start thinking again, all of that emotion comes flooding back. So, so how, how do I deal with that? What's that all about? Well, when you say you come back to reality, are you coming back to the new reality or are you going for, or trying to go back to the old reality? Because I believe that when you say come back to reality, what you really mean is you're going back to the illusion that life is the way it used to be a week ago. Acceptance means you really accept this is how the rules are right now. And when you start to operate from them, you still have to take action, but you'll start to take better action better ideas will start to flow through you because you're not fighting the reality. You're not wasting your emotional energy trying to change something that you cannot change. 
you are not in control of the situation, whether you think you are or not. What's happening around the world, what's happening with the government, what's happening with the lockdowns, you are not in control. So you've got to operate within the new rules. And acceptance means stop wasting your mind's energy thinking those thoughts about, well, what if this was the case? What if that was the case? Well, why isn't it, you know, why can't I do it this way? I've always done it this way. It's not fair that I've got to do it a different way. Acceptance means truly accepting. When you truly accept, something magical happens. And I don't know what other word to use, but something magical happens. Your creativity starts to blossom and you start to get new ideas which you didn't have access to from the lower emotions. So you start to operate in a different way. The actions that you take, which didn't work yesterday, because you're in acceptance, they'll start to work. So I, I go into acceptance and accept the situation that I find myself in. Um, I become free of the emotions, the negative energy, the unhelpful energy that I'm experiencing. And then uh, it comes back in 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever it is. And as soon as it comes back, that's because I'm fighting the reality or resisting the reality. Is that correct? Is that the correct terminology? Not correct? consciously, but unconsciously, yes. And what you do is apply exactly the same principle. Now, this is the boring bit about emotional intelligence. You have to keep applying it. It's funny you know, that you have to keep breathing. You have to keep <laughs> applying emotional intelligence in the same way until your mind gets conditioned to the new way of operating, until it stops being a stroppy teenager or a kid and kicking off every time something changes. And you just start to operate. You start to not react to what's happening. You start to respond to what hap what's happening. Respond means you are responsible. Responsible doesn't mean you're to blame. Responsible means response able you are able to respond you have the ability to respond in a better way reaction is just from a program you've got to decide do you want to be a program that just reacts to everything or do you want to start to be able to respond to the new situation and make different decisions and take different actions which then will create better results for you your company and your clients Okay, so uh, another uh, question. Just to finish, it's not something I guess uh, people want to hear, but that's the reality. Hmm. So just to just to follow up on that, then. So somebody makes me angry, and uh, or I choose to react in anger, and then I go into acceptance. But then perhaps two or three days later, that anger comes back again. It resurfaces. What's what's that about? Uh, I have a box of tissues in case I sneeze or cough. So. I should do, do that in a tissue. So can you see this? Yes. Okay, this tissue represents the anger you are feeling. So you apply emotional intelligence tools, go into acceptance, and uh, you know, the, uh, as you know, there are some tools that I teach, and you remove that layer of anger. What's just happened? Uh, another tissue's come up. Yeah, it could be anger, it could be another feeling. It might be courage. And then a few days later, this happens, and another bit of anger. And you go, oh, it didn't work. The anger's still there. No, the anger went, but there's another layer that you've stuffed down. Remember, you've got, uh, I guess, people here of a certain age, if I can put it that way. You'll have decades worth of this crap that's locked up in you because nobody taught you how to do that. The thing, you can do that, and it will take you ages, or you can just check the whole box away. And then another box comes up. Then you check that away and another box comes up. That's the reality, because energy has to flow. This energy will keep on coming back. Your job is either to do it layer by layer or box by box. That's a choice. But if you want it to stop, then you'd be, well, you better be prepared to die because it'll stop when you die. Yeah, so the, the, the reality is that I am uh, resisting is the fact that it's going to keep coming back and as soon as I accept that it's going to keep coming back then it will carry less emotional intensity if that's the right word yeah, because uh, you're not, as I experience you're not that. doing that you're not saying I don't want this to happen I don't want this to happen I want reality to be different you'll just deal with the reality in front of you right now every business including mine has a reality which has changed I'm pretty lucky because some of my business was already online, but 
I wasn't prepared to go 100% online within one day, which is what's happened. Whether I like it or not, I have to now operate this way. And because I'm not fighting it, I've actually picked up two clients in the last day because I've stopped fighting the fact that I've got to stay in my house and I'm regarded as one of the vulnerable. Uh, those of you that don't know me, I've had the pleasure of having three heart attacks. That's just the way that I've become really emotionally intelligent very quickly. So if you want to do this very quickly, just go and have a heart attack. That's my advice anyway. <laughs> and you'll have to face up to reality. But the fact is, the heart attacks actually saved my life and be, um, helped me become far more efficient at what I'm doing. I'm not working anywhere near as hard. And because of the way that I'm operating, I could adapt to that new reality and do whatever I need to do. Okay, I can't do certain things in the same way. I can't teach in the same way. I'm much better face-to-face. -face. That's what I prefer. But I can't do that right now. But I can be face-to-face -face on Zoom. I can be face-to-face -face on Skype or whatever system that you use. And when you start to then implement these new ways, you will start to see the results. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, and you might need to learn some tools, but this is the opportunity. You've been given this time for a few weeks to do nothing but sit around at home, probably. You can use that time to build your business from home. You can use that time to train yourself up. You can use that time creatively to creatively rather, to decide how you want the business to proceed beyond all of this. Here is an opportunity for you to change the course of your business, or you can continue down the line you were already on. Were you really truly happy and fulfilled? Were you achieving all your goals? If not, this is an opportunity to respond. Or you can react and go into a panic like most of the people around you, if you want to be a leader, you need to be above the line. If you want to lead your customers, if you want your customers to follow you, I, you want to be the shepherd and not one of the sheep, then you need to be above the line because leaders make courageous decisions. Leaders are in acceptance. Leaders raise their game. They raise their energy. That's what raising the game is. And when you decide to be a leader, then... It's different. Let me, uh, can you see the slide uh, on the screen at all? Not at the moment. Uh, let me just come back to it because this is important. Uh, let me know if you can see that. Uh, yes, I can, yeah. Okay, so just focus on the th emotions. The three lower emotions, apathy, grief, and fear, they are in the realm of what I call having. People at that place, uh, place themselves in uh, it's, it's what I call the keeping up with the Joneses syndrome because people define themselves by what they have in life or the, what they don't have in life. That's where their identity comes from. In lust, anger, and pride, people define themselves by what they do or what they don't do, and they judge others by what they do or what they don't do. So that's where this sense of the harder you work, the more you'll get. The harder you work, the more you deserve. That comes from the place of doing. Courage, acceptance, and peace are the place of being. People who are living in this area define themselves by the who they are, the type of person they are. That's where the greatest energy is. People in the doing sector, from lust, anger, and pride, they will achieve results, but they're going to have to continue to work hard. These are the successful business people who still work seven days a week. The successful business people from here may work maybe one or two days a week or maybe even less, but they are able to do that because they are in a higher energy. And there are a lot of people who are in this energy working for them. These people tend to be in employed jobs. These people tend to be self-employed or run businesses. These people are the true leaders. These are the pretend leaders. These are the true leaders up here in courage, acceptance, and peace. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Thank you. Uh, so just, I've got a couple of questions coming through now. So if, um, if anybody's got any questions, if you post them in the Q&A, um, 
can we can we make these slides available to it is being recorded there'll be a video that comes out to everybody that's registered can we make the slides available as well sanjay so All people right. have got that as a yep sure what i normally do when i speak is i send the slides to anybody uh, who actually connects with me uh, because i'm happy to give them away but connect with me and uh, if you got something out of this, then also you know, leave me a review and help me build my business, just as I'm going to help some of you build your businesses uh, as well. And uh, I, I believe you can give, some, give them some detail later on how to connect with me. But uh, uh, there are a number of different ways, and uh, uh, you'll get those details. Yeah, so what, what we'll do is towards where we'll just put Sanjay's LinkedIn profile in the comments box, in the chat box, so you can go and just connect with Sanjay and, and leave him a recommendation if you've enjoyed it, because Sanjay's obviously given his time uh, today to support us in the community. So, uh, Laura, that, that will come. It's just, he's on LinkedIn, basically. If you, if you search Sanjay Shah, then you'll find him on LinkedIn, but we'll put the URL for, well, Mark's just put it, Mark's just put it in there now. So if you want to go and, and do that, then you can. Um, I'm just going to start asking the questions. Um, I've got your question, Amel, but before I come to you, I just want to uh, sort of summarize because we've talked lots about our emotions. So um, my emotions or the emotions of the person that's watching, but uh, as a part of uh, the questions that people asked on before they came on, there's lots of questions around how we deal with the emotions of customers um, but more sort of closer to, to the hearts is a, a question of how we deal with emotions of our team. Uh, and I, I give you a couple of examples, Sanjay. One of them is how do we support our team members to open up with the leadership team? And then another question was how can I help my staff with their, their anxiety in the current situation? So do, do you have any thoughts about how we can make people feel things or help people feel things? Okay, for, for, uh, let me just be straight. You can't make people feel anything. Nobody can help any of you feel anything. So when you say, well, that person made me angry or that person did that, no, that's just you escaping the reality. Your emotions are a result of your thinking. You are responsible for the emotions you feel. What you think about the situation outside, what you think about other people or the world will create the emotions. So you, you can only create your own emotions. You can't create emotions in somebody else. So first, everybody's responsible for their own emotions. And end up, there's no other way around it. You're either a victim or you're the leader. If you're the leader, you need to be at a higher emotional level than your team. And by that, I don't, don't just mean higher in the sense that if they're in fear, you should be in anger. That's not going to work you need to be above the line. You need to be courageous and they will feel that. Animals do this instinctively. Dogs know when somebody is afraid and they'll attack. Dogs also feel when somebody is encouraged and they won't attack. So if you are, you need to be at least encouraged if you want to lead a team. So if you're looking to influence your team, influence occurs when you're above the line. Below the line, you are manipulators. You try and manipulate people to do things. Above the line, you are influencers. And what's the difference with influence? You do something and people follow you because they want to follow you. Below the line, they follow you because they are being manipulated and you're trying to get them to do something and people resent that. So when the shit hits the fan, if I put it that way, if you're below the line, if you're a, a leader or a pretend leader below the line, when the shit hits the fan, people will desert you. If you are, are a real leader, if you're above the line, when the shit hits the fan, people will support you. They'll surround you and say, how can we help? Because you inspire them. They are in a place, you know, people either uh, treat you with reverence or they revile you. Below the line, they revile you because they're scared of you. Above the line, they revere you and they'll pull around you. Your team will pull around you and say, how can we help? So number one, get above the line, because from that place, you can influence and people will follow. If you try and change people from below the line, you're going to fall flat on your face. That's my experience. I've done it, you know, I've made all the mistakes. I've done it from below the line and I've lost team members, uh, I've lost friends. Not a good place to apply emotional intelligence from if you're going to be leading a team. So the, so the answer to the question around both team members and customers 
Uh, if I'll just summarize in, into my language, just yeah. so people get a slightly different perspective. Basically, if you're going into a conversation in fear or anger, then the person that you're talking to will sense that and, and they will give the answer. So that they'd they give the answer that they think you want to hear potentially, or they will give an, an answer that's not the, not the, their true feelings because they don't feel safe. Is that, is that a good word to use? Don't feel uh, safe in that interaction? Uh, absolutely. So you, you can't bullshit people. They will sense you. What comes out of your mouth will be superseded by what people are feeling and sensing from coming out of you. Brilliant. So a couple, couple questions. Uh, Tina's asked, how long does it take to get above the line? How long do you want to take? <laughs> How long does it may take to make a decision? It's in an instant. Except it's like that. Yes, it takes practice to do it like that. But can you practice this for initially a few minutes? Because if you keep practicing it, then it comes down to a few seconds. And if you keep practicing, then it just becomes instantaneous. Brilliant. And then what's your biggest suggestion to, to move up a notch? <laughs> so, no. <laughs> Why would you want to move up a notch when you can move several notches? In a car, you don't have to necessarily go from first gear to second to third to fourth to fifth. It is possible to shift from first gear to third gear or uh, from first gear to fourth gear. So yes, you press on the pedal initially and you wait, you know, you're using up a lot more fuel, but then you can shift the gear very quickly. So in emotional intelligence, you don't have to go from apathy to grief, to fear, to lust, to anger, to pride, to courage. You can go from wherever you are below the line to above the line. The quickest way, and I know this is a, 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 a kind of step-by-step -step process, and I haven't got time to teach all the steps, but the quickest way is first and foremost to accept and the moment you accept a situation energetically, if you truly accept it, rather than pretend to accept, if you truly accept it, you are already above the line. Brilliant, thank you. Um, next question. Resistance is time bound. The longer the duration, duration, the weaker the resistance. How do you keep going with minimal damages and casualties? Uh, can you say that again? I'm just trying to understand the question. So there's a, there's a statement at the beginning, which I think you might want to challenge, that yeah. resistance is time-bound. Well, let me reply that by uh, going to Star Trek, which I love. The Borg said resistance is futile. Resistance mm -hmm. is a pure waste of your energy. It is futile. And then the longer the duration, the weaker the resistance. So I, th I think the question is around, okay, it might be sensitive now, especially things like grief, for example. And then over time, that grief subsides. So how do you make it subside quicker with the minimum damage and casualties? Two ways. You can make it subside by putting the lid on and pushing it down and down and down until consciously you've forgotten it's in there. But the energy that's in there is still going to impact you. Overall, the energy that's in your body, unless you open the lid, it's trapped in there. So it's no good saying, well, I'm just going to apply uh, more energy and I'll be free of the negative energy. That energy is still in there, it's sucking your energy away. So the, the lower energy, if they're in your system, you've got to overcome those energies first by putting in extra energy before you can even take any uh, good action. So. It, it isn't that resistance subsides for most people. It's just that they've pushed it down far enough that they don't feel it anymore. And then it's, oh, okay, it's gone. Until life comes and shakes you up again. The only reason you're feeling all the stuff you're feeling is not because it was created by coronavirus. It was already in you. Coronavirus has just come about and shook you up. And it's all coming to the surface. And you're trying to slam that lid down again to keep it below because you don't want to feel that crap. That's not using the energy, that's wasting the energy. Thank you. Uh, do you have some practical tips on what to do to start practicing this? Uh, yes, connect with me and I will send you some slides. And uh, uh, really, first and foremost, decide you wanna change and really change, not just Pretend. I, I remember when I met you, I challenged you on this before I took you on as a client. Uh, that uh, you know, and, and I do this with everybody uh, uh, that I've worked with. First, 
are you fed up? Are you fed up of being fed up? Because people are fed up, will do something for a little while, and then when the resistance comes in because things get harder, they'll stop. People are fed up of being fed up with the situation, will do whatever it takes. Are you at a place where you're willing to do whatever it takes to have a better business? Or are you just at a place at which you'll practice doing something until the resistance gets too much because it's hard work and you're going to stop? If you want to do something practical, first and foremost, commit to changing yourself because there's no hope of changing any of your team unless you change yourself first. And, and Simon, I remember when you first changed and then we did a, a team day at your company and I'm sure you remember that very well <laughs> as well. That would have been impossible had you not changed first. It was a, a, a very interesting day that was. Some years ago now as well, if I remember, if I remember correctly. Um, just to give you another, another idea, Steph, one of the things that I did, certainly to start with, was set up reminders to help me become conscious of my emotions. So something that helped me stop um, and then observe what I was experiencing. And there's an app, and it's still there, an app on my phone called Mind Jogger that uh, randomly pops up, uh, at, obviously at random intervals, to remind me to become conscious and uh, focus or experience the emotion that, uh, that I am currently uh, living in. Uh, and I've, I've found that really, uh, really helpful. And there are all sorts of tools, Simon, and uh, uh, the, the biggest help uh, that I've uh, got, in, and uh, uh, you know, I count you as one of them, is I have buddies in business that I can call up uh, whenever I'm kind of stirred and I know because I've taught them the tools they can also help me so work with a buddy is the best way uh, that uh, will beat everything if you got somebody because there's nobody who is as brainy as a human being no app no uh, computer so a buddy who's going to hold you up to task is not just going to take your crap but they'll say hang on is this really true yeah, and again, that's something that's been a massive help for me because uh, very often you you ring those people up and say, "This is this is what's going on, my story." And uh, I remember there's a chap called Mick that I rang one morning and I sh I shared my story, uh, and he just asked one question, and all of a sudden I realised how stupid I was being, and the conversation that I was having myself was, well, ridiculous basically, uh, and that helped me go into acceptance. So that's a, a really uh, yeah really uh, really valid point, Sanjay. Thank you. Um, do you think it would help to switch off from the media altogether to be able to get into acceptance? Uh, yes, uh, I, I wouldn't say altogether because I, I think you do need to be open to receiving some news, but certainly switch off the 24 hour news channels. I only watch news once a day, uh, if at all possible, uh, and switch off from the negativity because the world as a whole is operating around the line. Most of the history of mankind, humanity as a whole has been below the line. I won't go into how they can measure all of this or how it's been measured, but at the moment, if you look at the world, there's a heck of a lot of fear in it. Do you really want to listen to news that is based on fear? Brilliant, thank you. A uh, few more questions, we've got six minutes left. So if anybody wants to post questions, then please do. Uh, the next question, how do I deal with the pressure of living up to what other people expect of me? Uh, very simply. <laughs> the reason why I'm laughing is because that's one that, <laughs> that challenges me, still continues to challenge me. But anyway, go on, Sanjay, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to see how I can put it very simply. People are going to expect what they expect of you. If you want to live up to that, that's your choice but you are never ever going to live up to anybody else's ex expectations of you. It's hard enough to live up to your own expectations. How on earth are you going to live up to other people's expectations? Thank you for that reminder. Um, next question. I feel like a mother to all my clients. How can I separate and remain emotionally strong? First, stop being a mother. You're not their mother. You can be the shepherd, you can help them, you can guide them, but you can't mother them because people don't like being mothers or mothered rather. How did you respond to your mother when a, your mother was saying, do this, do that, or trying to help you? And there are adults that have mothers 
that are still treating them as they were 10 year olds. So mothering is not a good place to be. Back off from that and start to give them kind of guidance, but don't mother them, that there is a difference. So can you give guidance and step back and it's up to them whether they follow it or not and their results will be based on what they do. Mothering means almost doing it for them. That's the way I interpret it. The people who uh, kind of mother tend to try and control people. Thank you. And then I am self-isolating for 12 weeks and I'm already feeling low. How do I keep myself and my team going? Uh, well, uh, if it helps you, I'm self-isolating for 12 weeks as well uh, because of my previous health history. And uh, so what was the second part of the question? How can I? How can I keep myself and my team going? So. Okay. There's, um, just to expand on that, because this is a conversation I'm having with a lot of accountants. Um, uh, and again, it's something that I've experienced. And, and for me, I can explain that my emotion around it. But because of the, the connection with the business, the connection with the team and the connection with the clients, all of a sudden they've been ripped away from that. And they're no longer connected because they're, they're, even if they're working, they're in a, isolated in a bedroom or on a dining room table or whatever it is. So that connection has been broken. And I could, I could also put forward a think that it's challenging their identity because their identity is connected with their practice. Um, so how do you, where, where do you go with that, Sanjay? Okay, for, first and foremost, uh, this is going to bring up all sorts of psychological crap for people because we are so used to doing things the way we're doing. Uh, the way I do it, uh, because I have a team of people that I work with very closely, is I speak to them every single day via Zoom not just the telephone, but via Zoom so that we can see each other because communication, uh, if you can't see somebody, you lost more than 50% of the communication. Auditory com communication, which is the telephone, only accounts for up to 37%, I think, of the total communication. The rest of it is, uh, is uh, only a possible when you can see each other. And when I first came across this, and I blame you, Simon, because you introduced me to Zoom, and I thought, ah, it'll never work with the work I do. I need to be face-to-face -face with somebody. And I was proved completely wrong because I work with people remotely now most of the time because my clients tend to be from all over the place. And even through Zoom, you can get feelings across. Even through Zoom, you can lead your teams. So it's really important to have this communication with them. So. The most important tip is if you want to avoid the isolation, the isolation is when you stop communicating with the outside world. As long as you communicate and you communicate honestly and freely, and you know, I'm not saying do this with everybody, but do this with trusted people. I, I believe that the community Simon's got uh, can be uh, a trusted group of people if they decide to be and support each other. So the way to get out of the loneliness is to connect with people and communicate with people so that you don't feel as if you're in this on your own. Brilliant, thank you. And I'm very conscious we've got one minute until uh, 10.30, which is what we promised people. Mark, if you could just post the uh, link to Sanjay's LinkedIn page again. Uh, as I said a few moments ago, Sanjay's given his time this morning um, to share freely to the community, which uh, I would love to thank you for again, Sanjay. It's been uh, fantastic. Uh, if you could be so kind, uh, if you've enjoyed it, and it looks like most people have because they're still here, uh, if you could go to Sanjay's uh, profile and, and connect with him and, it, and just two or three brief words or a bit more if you've got the time uh, just to say thank you uh, and to recommend him, that would be very much uh, appreciated. And just uh, just before we go, I just I've got a couple more questions. This is a, again another one that uh, that comes up a lot. So, uh, can I just also say you paid thousands of pounds to me for that one day training? I'll put that on video now. That's available uh, uh, at a fraction of the cost. And I've also as a, uh, an offer because of what's going on, uh, people get, can get it for a fraction of the fraction of the cost. Uh, that is, I can't remember the exact figures, but if they connect with me uh, and let me know, j just uh, connect with me and let me know that you met me on this uh, webinar, uh, then I'll make sure that uh, I give you access to that so that uh, it, uh, you know, I'm literally talking about a few pounds here.
Yeah, so to, uh, whatever it was, it was, it was a, uh, yeah, to a, a bo- bottle of wine type s- scenario. And just just to f- expand on that, that is that a, a six seven hour course? That's a recording of the one day event that you run. Yeah, yeah, it's about four hours worth of videos, but there are some exercises in there. Now it isn't specifically for accountants, but anybody can use it. So you can use it for your accountancy practice, but you can also use it for yourself. And there's also a support structure that I'm putting into place. Uh, I can't give you the details because I'm still working out the details myself, Uh, but uh, people, if they want to, they can get extra support uh, apart from the, uh, just viewing the video so that they can start to practice this uh, in an efficient and practical way. Brilliant. So then the, the, the last question, which I know lots of people are experiencing, and I think you've kind of touched on this, um, before but let's just we'll re-emphasize it because it's important um how do i stop myself from feeling i am not doing enough i find i'm rethinking the services that i'm offering and wanting to do more and more and more for my customers so i then feel overwhelmed and stressed so how, how, how do i stop the feeling or uh, prevent the feeling of having to do more by changing the thinking that you need to do more because that feeling is coming from this thinking that says, if I don't do more, then I won't be able to retain clients or my business will suffer. That's not true. You don't know that to be true. Rather than thinking of doing more, think of doing less, but better. Brilliant. Thank you. So doing less, but better. That's a great way to, uh, to, to, to end the conversation. As always with this, you've got Sanjay's uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, connect with Sanjay and Sanjay's uh, offered to answer any questions that anybody's got. Uh, If you want to hear more about my experiences of working with Sanjay, then please message me on whatever forum you're on at the moment. I'm dreading that one. (laughs) (laughs) Facebook or LinkedIn or, or whatever. And I will, um, I will share my experience as well. So, Um, That's been really, really uh, insightful for me, uh, Sanjay, and uh, it's been a little hour break from the chaos uh, that we're currently experiencing in the world. So uh, thank you very much for that. And um, no doubt we'll be back on here in perhaps a week or two weeks to see where the world's gone to. So uh, thank you very much for your time, Sanjay. Thank you.